In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. You recall, brothers and sisters, our toil and drudgery, working night and day in order not to be burden any of you, we proclaimed to you the gospel of God. You are witnesses, and so is God, how devoutly and justly and blamelessly we behaved toward you believers. As you know, we treated each one of you as a father treats his children, exhorting and encouraging you and insisting that you walk in a manner worthy of the God who calls you into his kingdom and glory. And for this reason, we too give thanks to God unceasingly, that in receiving the word of God from hearing us, you received it not as the word of men, but as it truly is the word of God, which is now at work in you who believe. The word of the Lord. You have searched me, and you know me, Lord. You have searched me, and you know me, Lord. Where can I go from your spirit? From your presence, where can I flee? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I sink to the netherworld, you are present there. You have searched me, and you know me, Lord. If I take the wings of the dawn, if I settle at the farthest limits of the sea, Even there your hand shall guide me, and your right hand hold me fast. You have searched me, and you know me, Lord. If I say, surely the darkness shall hide me, and night shall be my light. For you, darkness itself is not dark, and night shines as the day. You have searched me, and you know me, Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Whoever keeps the word of Christ, the love of God is truly perfected in him. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You are like whitewashed tombs, which appear beautiful on the outside, but inside are full of dead men's bones and every kind of filth. Even so, on the outside you appear righteous, but inside you are filled with hypocrisy and evil doing. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You build the tombs of the prophets and adorn the memorials of the righteous. And you say, if we had lived in the days of our ancestors, we would not have joined them 
in shedding the prophet's blood. Thus you bear witness against yourselves that you are the children of those who murdered the prophets. Now fill up what your ancestors measured out. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, we just had that brief uh, time with Ruth, barely enough to get the gist of the book. It was only really two days in the lectionary. So here we are in the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. You know, a lot of the times we read these letters of St. Paul, and it can be a little difficult to figure out what's going on, what's going on, because we only see one side of the conversation. We only see what Paul is responding to and trying to uh, deal with. We only see that. So we have to sort of read between the lines to try to figure out what it is that's going on in this community that Paul needs to write and to tell them this particular message. So the first thing that we see is this, um, is uh, a recollection, not proud boasting, but just merely the statement of fact that that he was not any sort of burden for them. He was not, he did not, uh, you know, place them under some obligation of providing for him or anything like that. He worked himself. So perhaps there were people in the community that were already trying to discredit St. Paul about what he had done and what he had preached. And they were, you know, saying things like, you know, gosh, he was such a great burden on us while he was here. And he's trying to say, no, that's not the way it worked. It's not the way he remembers it anyway. But he is trying to be truthful with them. And in this truth, again, he's not just trying, not trying to build himself up or to make him himself into, um, you know, to have people admire him or something like that. He's just trying to state merely the truth so that they might see what he has done and might model their own behavior on him. They might see what they need to do to work for the Lord and not to expect any repayment, to not be a burden on people, but to support yourself. And it is um, that aspect that they are to take on. Also, he wants them to consider himself as their father in the faith. He, and he uses this image, I believe, because he realizes that in their own understanding of the faith, what he is receiving back from them, I believe, and again, this is reading between the lines, is that they are really just children. They really don't understand everything yet. And so he provides this image, again, not to be superior to them or to force his superiority on them and that they should in one way or another, exalt him. He's just saying, take my advice as you would the advice of your father. If your father told you something, you would accept his authority in the matter and at least give it good consideration. That's what he's asking for. That's what he's he's trying to develop in them. He's trying to get them to that point. And again, there must have been Uh, some problem in the community where they were just rejecting what he had told them. And uh, he needs to exert some authority, again, not for his his own benefit or not for his own uh, exaltation. He is doing it for their good as a father would to a child. So uh, he ends this portion saying that they should thank God. They should take this time to thank God and to remember that what he gave them was not just his own idea, not just some idea that he cooked up and he thought would be, would be good to tell people. The, these words that he gave them came from God. And so they should accept them in that way. They shouldn't just rely on just a human witness or just on someone saying something you know, clever or erudite, they, he should instead, they should instead 
just receive him as this messenger of God, as a prophet of God, if you will, as someone passing on the word of the Lord. So uh, again, Paul writing back to this community, uh, always seem to be problems in community life, I suppose. And here he is trying to deal with these different aspects now that he is away from them and perhaps through the rumor mill or perhaps someone writing him has learned of these, uh, these difficulties in his absence. Now Jesus takes a very strong stance against the scribes and Pharisees in, uh, in the gospel today. And you know, he's the only one who can really do something like this, to call someone a hypocrite or to liken them to whitewashed tombs or something like that. Because the Lord is the only one who has the capability of judging, of judging a person. He's the only one that can do that. And he sees right through them. He sees that their worship is empty. He sees that they just do things for show and that they, are, they don't really have their heart in it. And that's, that's the problem. That's the problem. They don't really believe what they are doing. And again, we can't make that estimation of another person. We don't see them as the Lord sees them. And we should never judge them, of course, of, of, even when we see them doing something bad, it is, it is good for us to evaluate and to look at, acti look at behavior and say that's good, that's bad, but we never ascribe it to the person or we never blame the person for it, or we never call them a sinner because of it. That's not our job. Our job is to help. Our job is to help them to see what they are doing wrong and to help them move away from that wrong thing. That's our job. But for the Lord, he sees right through. And it, but again, he's not doing this just to be critical. He's not doing this just to, um, uh, just to be a problem for them. In a way, he's really stirring them up. He is hoping, I think, ultimately, that, that in pointing out these things, that they will recognize how wrong these things are and that he, they will turn from him. But I think, ultimately, the Lord realizes that no matter what he does, they are not going to turn away from these. He even, he even calls on them at the end of this gospel to... Uh, to be like their ancestors who murdered the prophets, to be like that, like like them, in terms of their treatment of him, even bidding them to crucify him effectively. In this reading, he is he is doing that, um, I believe, as a challenge, perhaps as an acknowledgement of what is going to happen, but also I believe with their good at heart to help them to see the wrong that they are doing, to help them to turn from that wrong. Now we know how things came out. We know what, uh, what happened to our Lord. But what we should, I think, take with us on this is a recognition that even though we try to do something good for another, or we try to help them with some difficulty, there will always be these, the, the problems associated with that, a personal injury, I would say, would result from that. And so we have to be very careful about that. And as a wise um, professor at the seminary once told me, and I, I like to share this advice and I like to live this advice more, I hope, is that when the person is confident of the love that you have for them, then they will be able to accept the criticism. The criticism that is not given to tear them down, but is given to help them. So that's the thing we have to be confident of, or, and others need to be confident of, of us if we are able to do this. And also, I suppose it goes the other way around. When we receive correction from someone else, we have to accept that they have our best interest in mind if they are truly Christians and they truly love us as Christians do. This is um, the way the Christian community works. We see the Lord providing for us not just an example, 
not just uh, not just a um, what would I say uh, a means of uh, offering assistance to someone. He does this. He does this a great peril to himself, and he accepts that because he realizes that it is only through this, through this great sacrifice, that they will be able to follow in his footsteps, to bring others away from evil towards good. It works on a personal level for us as we take in the Eucharist again and again. It works also collectively and also to all we interact with. If we truly employ Christian love that the Lord has shown us, if we really have the well-being of the other person in mind. So may the Lord uh, fill us with his abundant graces today through this Eucharist. May he encourage us to live a life of sacrifice, a life of uh, injury, if you will, a life of difficulty as we ourselves try to live as he is calling us to, and as we draw others to do the same. And let's pray. We pray for the victims of, uh, of the uh, hurricane in Florida. We pray that um, they might receive the assistance that they need in this time. We pray to the Lord. And we continue to pray for, for Maui, for the, um, uh, certainly for the 150 or so souls that have been lost uh, in those fires. We pray that they be received into the kingdom. And we uh, also pray for those who are providing assistance in this time that uh, they may receive what they need and be effective in helping. We pray to the Lord. We offer special prayers for Kim Higgins, for uh, Jeff, for Deetta, for uh, Mr. Ingle, uh, for Kate Kopic, for Sophia Mordini, for Gail Powell, uh, for Thad, and Brittany. We pray to the Lord. We uh, offer continuing now prayers of healing and comfort for Carol Wenzel, Paul Ramsey, Stu, Kitty Spurrier, Carmela Obachowski, Kenny, Bishop Peter Jugas, Marie, Melissa, Treva Redmond, Marita Mouton, William Amain, Keith Ball, Madison Placencia, Herman de Santiago, and Eva Tabora. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the people of Ukraine that they may soon know peace and that their country may be returned to its state before the Russian invasion. We pray to the Lord. We offer the Mass today uh, for continued healing and strength for Dave Nichol. We pray to the Lord. Um, any prayers you'd like to offer? Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer.
God of all times and places, you know our human inclination to write ourselves into the stories of the past. We imagine that we would have been heroes, healers, and helpmates to your prophets and people. Yet in our world, when the opportunity arises, we so often deny what is true in favor of what is comfortable and ignore what is broken and in need. Inspire us toward change, toward prophetic witness, toward emboldened love, that we may not be a just a beautiful surface, uh, but reflect your beauty in the world through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church. Through Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Joan of Arc and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Amen.